Hello everyone, welcome to the third video in a series that we have introducing the winds in the woodwind quintet. Today's video, I'm going to be showing you my instrument, the horn, and a lot of other brass instruments. And then we're going to have a really fun little game for you to do with us. And at the end, there will be some music where you can play the homemade instruments that you've made in previously. So let's get going. As you saw in the first demo workshop video, this is the French horn and I, that's my instrument. I'm going to demonstrate it for you a little bit. Again, remember that in order to get a sound, I have to vibrate my lips. <laughs> And I just put that up to the mouthpiece and then it, the whole horn uh, amplifies the sound. So I have a very big range. I can play high and I can play low. The horn looks like it's just about this big. But actually, the main piece of tubing is really long. It's just coiled up like this so I can carry it around, put it in the case and take it on the subway or put it in the car. Now, if I were to stretch out that tubing, it would be 12 feet long. It's really long. I can show you how long that is on another instrument that I have, which is called an elf horn. This is my elf horn. This is very long, as you can see. And this is how long my horn would be if I stretched out the main piece of tubing. This instrument is made out of wood, but it's still in the brass instrument family. I have a mouthpiece. I buzz my lips into the mouthpiece and I get a sound. So this is what it sounds like. Alphorn comes from Switzerland. This is a country that has a lot of mountains. The shepherds in the mountains would find a tree that had a natural curve at the bottom. And that would happen because the snow would pile up at the bottom of the tree. And it would be, they start out this way and then the tree would go up straight. The shepherds would cut that tree down, cut it in half lengthwise, and hollow it out and then bind it back up together to make a long horn. The alp horn is great for signaling in the mountains. So you could hear it along at long distances. All brass instruments are capable of making loud sounds, which are really excellent for signaling. We're going to show you some more instruments that are in the brass instrument family and that have great signaling capabilities. This is the horn, or commonly called the French horn. It is a member of the brass instrument family because the way I get a sound on the instrument is to vibrate my lips together. And then I get a sound when I play that into the mouthpiece. There are other instruments in the brass family. Most of them are made out of metal. What instruments can you think of that are in the brass family? The trumpet. the trombone, the tuba. The tuba is very big and so it makes really low sounds. The trumpet is the smallest instrument in the family and it makes higher sounds. So here's my horn and here's an instrument that looks a lot like my horn. This is a hunting horn and it precedes the fancy valve system that you see on this horn. So when they first had horns like this, people could ride a horse, have the horn on their shoulder, and still have their hands on the reins of the horse. It would be very easy to lift up and play the instrument. <laughs> That 
hunting horn is just a plain length of tubing and you can only get a few notes on it like this. But we would like to be able to get more notes than that. And fortunately, a hundred years ago, someone decided to do some experimentation and they figured out how to make valves. Like you have a valve under your sink to turn the water on and off. So up here, I have these levers on my horn. And when I push one of those, the air goes through extra tubing like this. So if I go through extra tubing, that makes the instrument just a little bit longer. Do you think that will make the sound go up? Or do you think it will make it go down? Let's see. First, I'm gonna play a note without pushing the valve, and then I'm going to push it. So you can see if an instrument is longer, it's lower. meaning a little part of an orchestra piece. All of the instruments in the brass family can be played very loudly, and this sound can travel at great distances and can be very useful for sending signals. Here are some other instruments that are considered in the brass family because again, to make a sound on these instruments, you have to vibrate your lips. Archaeologists have found conch horns in ancient burial sites. So we know that the conch horn has been used as a signaling instrument or as a ceremonial instrument for a very long time. Here is a conch horn but as you can see, the top is all intact. This is the way you might find it on the beach with this pointy part right here. It's impossible to play this. You can't get into the coils that go all the way round and round inside the, the shell. So if you want to play this like a conch horn, you have to cut the end off. And then you have a natural mouthpiece. <laughs> Here's a bigger one, and again, we have the end cut off so that we can buzz our lips into it. Now, since it's bigger, do you think it's going to be lower or higher? Great sound. You saw the picture of the ancient 35,000-year-old flute made from an animal bone. People have been using animal parts to make instruments for a long time, 35,000 years. They also use horns off of the animal. So here's a horn, a cow's horn that would come off of his head. And this one is from Mexico. And again, I vibrate my lips into this mouthpiece area. You may have also seen ram's horns or shofars. And we have some picture we're gonna show you right now. Here's another horn that is very special that I'd like to show you. It's really a trumpet. It's made out of clay 
and it was made around 2,000 years ago by the mochi culture, the ancient mochi culture of Peru in South America. This horn is rather short, as you can see, so it's going to sound quite high. It has a mouth or the bell part of the instrument where the sound comes out. We always call that the bell. And as you can see, this is shaped like a jaguar. The other thing that's really interesting about it, I hope you can see, it still has the paint lines going along the side. I'm gonna play this one for you. I have to be very careful with this one. have been found in cultures all around the world. Here I have a horn from Tibet. Sometimes these are twice as long as this. Now we're going to show you a video of some of these Tibetan horns being played. that we find in Africa are what we call side blown, where you blow into the instrument is not on the end, it's in the middle. Can you see where this hole is here, right in the middle of the bronze tube? And that's where you're going to buzz your lips and get a sound. This is from the Benin culture in West Africa. It's probably uh, over 100 years old. This end has a rooster. The rooster is a symbol for the queen, the power of the queen. And this end has a fish, the bell end, shaped like a fish. Here's what this sounds like. Now we're going to play a piece for you called strutting butterflies. It's a funny name because whoever saw a butterfly strut, you know, to do like that. But it's written by a wonderful composer. He's over 90 years old and he lives right here in Douglas and Queens. And he writes very fun music. And this is one of his really fun pieces. He did a great job about giving everyone in the group a chance to play the solo part, the most important tune part of the music. As we pass that around, you're going to see each one of us featured when we have the solo. So watch and listen very carefully and count how many times each instrument gets solo. You'll, you'll know because that's the only picture that you're going to see of the instrument who's playing the solo, the person who's playing the solo. If you have to watch this part of the YouTube several times to get the count for everybody, that's okay. You might have to watch it five times, but be sure to count and be sure to turn that count into your teacher when you report back after watching this video. Have fun! Thank you. 
Now we're going to play a piece from Colombia by the Colombian composer Jorge Olaya Munoz. This piece is called Te Sorprende, and it means, are you surprised? I hope you have fun making rhythms and playing along with us. Thank you. 